Hello, good morning. It's me, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry for the late start this morning. I've had a bit of an issue. Uh, this time it's not technical, it's me. Um, probably you can see by my face, not because of the beard, uh, but my eyes, I've had problems with them. Um, I am allergic to cats. <laughs> and believe it or not, even though we've got cats, still love them. Um, but my eyes are swollen up, so I've had a bit of an issue with them this morning. So it was a bit of a late start getting all hooked up. Um, my live feed button has decided to stop on the other cameras. Oh, awesome! One of these technical. Now I've got a technical problem with the camera freezing. Um, <laughs> what can we do about that? Not a lot. If I go to this one, there we are, slightly better. Um, so yeah, apologies, but we are here, which is good. Uh, last week uh, I was telling you about the Sky uh, Portrait Artist of the Week. That's uh, live on a Sunday morning at 10 a.m. UK time on the Sky TV Facebook page. They're going to do another one tomorrow. Um, so I did it last week. But I actually sat back last week and kind of watched the conversation going and waited until I kind of um, got used to the conversation, uh, looked at the, the sitter and started to think about what I would maybe like to do. So I didn't kind of rush into it. Uh, sometimes I kind of set all my materials out first and I kind of wait for the program to start and I do it in four hours um, and it all feels kind of um, a bit hurried so I decided to take some of my advice and kind of slow down a little bit and I decided to kind of really just enjoy the process and sit back and listen to the conversations and think about what I'd maybe like to do and during that kind of thought oh, I'd really like to do an oil painting so I did I sat back I didn't restrict myself to four hours I did it just over Kind of four hours time but i live streamed it on youtube took a couple of breaks in between so over in all the length of time was about six hours or so um the live stream sadly the, the thing part two is still up there but part one isn't problem being is i was also playing music in my headphones i wasn't doing much chat at the time hello desiree good to see you um yeah so i wasn't playing uh, music in my headphones sorry I, I, I was playing music in my headphones i wasn't chatting and the microphone picked up some of the music and because of that there was a copyright issue and it had to be taken down so i think part two is still up there so you kind of see towards the end of it um i kind of chat a little bit my son popped online um so i was kind of chatting with him it was like a family conversation um so yeah so this week um i kind of decided what, what what could i kind of look at and a while back uh somebody told me about this book and it's a wonderful book uh, it's the Lessons in Masterful Portrait Drawing by Mao Kun Yim and Iris Yim. Um, and I was looking through it and I found a portrait that I really like. It was a guy called Mr. Lee. <laughs> How apt. And I thought I would really like to try and tackle it. Um, so this is what we're going to look at today. I have got a little video for people who haven't maybe seen it yet uh, of the time lapse that I did of I basically edited the six hours down into about a minute of the portrait that I did last week of the sitter uh, Annie McManus, who's a Radio 1 DJ. And she was painted last week by um, Annie Lavelle, who was a previous uh, contestant on Sky Portrait Artist of the Year. Uh, looking forward to this week, so I'll be doing it again tomorrow. Um, I haven't decided again what materials I'm going to use. I want to try and keep myself flexible and also open to whatever the sitter is like um, there's a really good uh, little YouTube oh not YouTube sorry a Facebook uh, post um, by Sky Portrait Artist of the Year uh, by Kathleen uh, who's one of the judges and Kathleen Serrano and she was sort of saying what the judges are kind of looking out for and it is a bit of everything you know they're looking for talent they're looking for quality they're looking for um, consistency they're looking for somebody who doesn't mind a challenge or you know how they're going to fit their genre into four hours you know they may have to tweak it a little bit how flexible they are so there's a bit of everything how can you get uh, consistency and flexibility on the same thing but there is uh, an element of that and I reflected back on to maybe start making me think about when I was on it and what I was trying to do and not really looking at my work as I was producing it to stand back and reflect and to adjust to both um, 
my response to the to the sitter uh, but also my technique and what I was doing so it really made sort of made me start to think about that and I thought it was a really good uh, couple of tips gets you to think about what you're actually doing right now in front of say, the person that you're drawing as a, as a portraiture now I know some of you might not be into portraiture you might be into other, drawing other things but this, it's still relevant if say for example you're drawing from a landscape um, what is it you'd like to bring to that image in the poetry sense as in you your response to it rather than just a carbon copy of a likeness there's, there's certain um, technical elements to that which which we're going to go through today and I've been going through over the last few weeks um, but there's also an element of you the artist which always comes out in the drawing and it starts to make yourself to be aware of that and things that you like to do uh, elements of artwork that you like that you may want to try and bring into your work um, so I, I was looking at the images today and I found this lovely image of Mr Lee and I thought I'd really like to try that I'm not going to follow the necessarily I'm going to show you the page that it's on in the book um, I'll put links to this book uh, in the notes after I do this um, because it's a lovely step-by-step -step stage drawing of the portrait that we're going to try and do but I'm going to do mine a little bit different today um, in a sense that I'm not going to follow what the book says in the way it's doing it which is sounds counterproductive but there's a lot of similarities to it um, and what I wanted to try and bring across is my artistic response is very um, important as well as the technical response you as an artist is important as the technique that you start to build so you have to kind of feed yourself artistically as well as technically you know if you start to bring in elements about what it is you actually like do you like things that are very contrasty and highly lit and very dramatic or do you like the subtlety and softness and um, if you're bringing in colours and things like that what colours are you going to use, what colour palette, what are you trying to say both about the image that you're trying to create but also artistically what are you trying to say so I'm sure there'll be lots of questions about that um, and ask away this is where we can do it um, obviously I'll try and respond to everything I can as soon as possible um, so yeah uh, and, and thank you for those in, uh, who were going to the Art Art Centre and whose classes were sadly cancelled who couldn't make it because obviously the Covid restrictions that were in place uh, and, and thank you for sort of joining us here I can really appreciate it as I said right from the very beginning this has been very important for me um, artistically and also it's really helped me communicate about art and how it can be viewed and, and processed in lots of different ways um, I'm going to show you a little tiny clip of what I did for last Sunday's response for Annie McManus so I'm going to pop that up as soon as I press start it will start and it's only about a minute long so you can sit back and look at it and if there's any questions ask away here it is So that was it, <laughs> quite quick and brief. And there is the actual real life portrait just sitting behind me. Ooh, terrible light on that. There we go. Let's see if we bring that closer. Uh, where was coming on that one? And there we are. Um, what I've noticed is, as you can see, it's a lot paler and lighter, which is something I was trying to go for when I was painting it. But the actual um, image during the YouTube clip was this really high um, saturated image 
Um, and the colours are really, really strong, and that's not what I was painting. So it was really weird as I was painting this and looking at the screen. I was going, oh, that's kind of looking completely different, and it had a different feel to it. It's the same image, two different slightly colour balances to it, and the Im the impact from it was very different. I wanted to get there's a certain Irish quality to the colours. Obviously, I don't know this is uh, from Ireland. Um, and it, she went to Belfast. I think she went to college or uni here. Um, and I wanted to capture some of that. There's a lovely soft. Mm, most milkiness to her, to the quality to her skin, and the colours were very earth, earthy. And it's something. So I thought it was a cat. It is a cat. Um, there was something really earthy, and I was trying to get that colour palette to really work for me that way. There's issues I think around elements of the portrait that I think I could improve on, but rather than trying to rectify them after the fact. If it was a portrait that I was going out for a commission or if it was for uh, an exhibition, I would continue to work on it in that kind of day reflection, it, like taking time to really pause and have a look can really help you move your artwork along. Uh, how do you get the tones with colour as opposed to graphite? Um, very similar way, with graphite, if you press hard you go darker, if you press light it goes lighter. Um, you can layer up, so you've got a range of pencils from light to dark. Um, and with colour, um, I, I work out what my palette is. I don't try and get every colour that's available. I was painting with Michael Harding paints um, and I kind of ran through the colours that I was using. So um, I think I have the palette kind of knocked around there. Um, so just to remind myself what I had. Um, yeah, there was a winter newton green a prussian blue an ultramarine blue um a raw sienna a raw umber a cadmium yellow and a cadmium red yellow ochre uh, and a warm white a uh, naples yellow and those colors that i chose were quite earthy but there was like a cool and a warm of each kind of color not so much with the red it was a very strong red but i wasn't using a lot of red for that i was using it to uh, strengthen certain colors so i there was no red in that painting but what i used was that red to warm colors up and cool colors down for i'd use um so pushing blue to cool the color down so rather than using black and white we can make a picture painting look either very muddy or very chalky using those colors to find and then tweaking it lightly with a little tiny touch of white and the warm white that i was using again was michael harding um wasn't quite so strong as say the titanium white would be so looking at those colors um i can work a range from the raw color itself say it's uh, raw umber and i can make it go two ways i can warm it up and lighten it or i can um cool it down I can add uh, different elements of colors so it gives you a whole range then of where you want the colors to go um, and I say rather than just adding white to make something lighter sometimes you're mixing another color so for example the shadow on the side of a head had a very purplish hue to it and, and then taking that purple into the creaminess of the skin would cool it off a little bit so the shadow was more warm and the face that was in the light was more cool now if it was the opposite way around and I wanted to make a face look very very orange and warm um, the shadows that I would use would be something cool so I was really looking at that and like you do in graphite looking at how light falls so it would necessarily fall top down as the light kiln comes in it hits the top of the head here so it would be lighter here and as the light falls down the face it gets darker and only subtly because it's lighter on this side of my face than it is on this side of my face so you've got to think how light falls this way but also how it falls around the shape of what it is you're painting so it could be a bucket it could be a head you know it could be an apple whatever the object is how that light actually moves around the space so i start to think about 
your object in three dimensions not necessarily painting color on the page it's about how light is moving around that shape and it starts to dictate this thing to be a little bit lighter here a little bit darker here how the light transitions across the face um, so you can see on here on the screen there I've got a shadow on this part of my nose because most of the light is coming from a light here and as it goes across my across my face here there's no kind of line to distinguish say my nose from my cheek it kind of blends into one another a little bit you see that whereas on this side you can see on this part of my nose I'm trying not to poke my eye out <laughs> You can see where this shadow line is, but how that breaks across the bridge of the nose. It's not just a stark, sharp line because I'm human and there's a softness around us to the top of my nose. And it's not a, it's not an edge like that. Um, so the shadow it's, shadow edge itself is quite s soft, a little bit fluffy, harsher though than it would be. Say for example, how that. Um, light transitions from this highlight on my cheek to this dark area here you can see this shadow here is like a dark burgundy color but the shadows here even though it's further away from the light source is actually lighter than this shadow that's because there's a undulation in my cheek in my face which causes that shadow to appear darker so rather than just thinking oh it goes from light to dark so everything looks up here is light everything down here is dark you've got to also think about the undulations and movement of the object so the structure of the head uh how late and um, let's leave early. no i was late as well alex so don't, don't worry about that um so yeah so today i'm going to work on a portrait uh it's going to be of mr lee which is there <laughs> still can't figure out this um left and right thing online um, so I got the book uh, sat here oh, he's there so it, it is the masterful portrait drawing by um, Mao Kun Yim and Irish Yim and the portrait we're going to do is uh, a portrait of Mr Lee which is on page 72 um, now somebody actually mentioned this book to me um, from the art class and I looked at it and I put it on my one of my wish lists and I was very lucky I got it for a, a, a gift uh, for Father's Day gift um, so it's, it's, a, it's a really nice book to have and there's a wonderful little section on there I'm just going to flick down to it so you can see it not my arm so there can zoom out a little bit hopefully this will stay right there there we go hopefully this is the page I wanted to kind of look at anyway um, it's a great reference book but it was a lovely stage about how this drawing develops now it's flipped around from the opposite image but you can see finding out what the structures are and developing shadow shapes and it's not until the end that you start to refine it to get the detail and it's something I keep reiterating and talking about um, I just thought it was a wonderful little uh, synopsis of of that process now it's quite nice that this book takes you through um, sort of starting off using a B pencil and but drawing lightly to find marks and to find the shapes of, of the head and the structures uh, marking the boundary lines where the noses are and things like that and then switching to uh, a darker pencil sort of 3 or 4B and adding the um, values which are the darks and lights to the, sh to the space and building those up so you can't actually see the structure marks in the final picture they disappear because they'll get absorbed into the actual shadow shapes of the drawing um, what I'm going to do today I'm going to pop that up there so I've got a good image of it also just did a quick photocopy of it so I can have it up beside my uh, picture that I'm going to do I'm going to work on something a little bit different, a different style of doing this. Um, it's something to kind of experiment with it so I'm not going to get um, so tight. It's to be a little bit looser, to let some of the mediums do the work for us, uh, the mark making techniques and things like that. Sometimes we can get too fussy. I, I'm still 
culpable to it where I get too fussy over details and get lost in the minutiae of things and I have to stand back and review what, what it is I'm doing and this process is a little bit looser and freer um, but it's still structured in the way that we are controlling the image it's not going to be distorted it's not going to be an abstract but it's a little bit more expressive and it allows you to give a little bit more artistic personality your artistic personality a flair to the, to the picture um, so what we're going to work on today is in charcoal. Um, the page is just a, a cartridge page, cartridge paper. Um, I just want to check this other camera because, yep, it's still frozen. So all I'm going to do is make sure I can make sure I can switch this on. It's on a video capture device. Done. So hopefully that will start working. Why aren't you working? Ooh. I don't know why it's not working. Oh, okay. Switch that one. There's always an issue with cameras, isn't there? Right, when I was doing that. Alright, sorry about all the screen flipping. You don't want to see that one again. Right, I have to switch this camera off and switch it on again. Not the big one. Uh, the video camera device, that should be on. Might be a cable. It's going to make this a lot harder if this doesn't work. Uh, let me have to stop the thing again. Right. There we go. Hopefully, fingers crossed. This one's been working sweet. Um, for some reason, it's completely frozen this morning. I don't know why. Please. Computers, eh? What can you do? And switch it off. And okay, what I'm going to do, I can still talk to you in this little bit. This other part of the screen might go a little bit blank for a second uh, while I try and add it all back in again. Do a capture device. some reason it's not working. So it might be a cable issue. Okay, bear with me one second. Sorry about getting so close. One of these live things, I'm sure TV companies have hundreds of uh, technical experts working for them. Every time the other camera goes off as well. Well, this one I can fix. I'm getting quite good at fixing this particular camera. Um, so what can you do? There's one thing. Talk amongst yourselves. Ask a question. <laughs> Okay, at least we've got that camera back up, which is good. Now I have to figure out this one. Because this one is the main drawing camera. Because uh, the other one's set up on the other side. So uh, I'm not too sure how to fix this one. I thought it might be just a cable thing. I'm going to make sure that okay, well, I'm trapped somewhere. Let me see. Not the most flattering image of me this morning, I do apologise. 
Oops, that's me, uh, my book being knocked on the floor. Let's see. That was a great day. <laughs> Have you ever had one of these days? Okay, video capture image. Nope, not that one, because this one works. Uh, wrong cam. Uh -huh. oh. Don't know what to do about this because it's not working. Can figure a video. Um, anybody got any clues? We're going to have, just have an art chat <laughs> with a little tiny picture of me. If I flip it back to the other, there we are. I was going to do a picture of uh, Mr. Lee, but it looks like my other camera, which I have set up for the demonstrations has just decided not to work so that's kind of scuppered those plans um so this might be a little bit briefer than normal um guys what are you working on at the moment how you, you can tell me about the types of drawing that you're doing um let's see we were going to work from this book um and you might want to have a go yourself it might be a challenge for you this week so um if you can find it online uh, it is from the Lessons of Master of Portrait Drawing. Um, it's on page 72. There's a wonderful picture of a gentleman called Mr. Lee. Um, kind of chose it today, obviously, because of the name. But also, I like the portrait as well. There's a lot of subtlety and softness in it. Um, what I was going to do is work with uh, charcoal today. I was going to work with uh, powdered charcoal to begin with, just to darken the entire page down. Um, you can literally flick it on, put on with a brush, rub it all over, soften it all in, and it gives you a wonderful ground which is not perfectly white. And what I was then going to do was start to use a more reductive process. So I was going to use an eraser rubber uh, to rub out some of the issues, some of the elements where highlights were, but also put in some structural marks, then go back in over with the charcoal pencil just to bring out where those shapes are. Um, drawing with some of the uh, chuckles that I have which give a much flatter um, coverage um, so using things like uh, the na nature room charcoal I've got which is lovely because it's very consistently um, it's better than willow willow kind of just breaks up and it disappears but you know willow's got its place in in, in the art world as a medium you get some interest in that so it's just like I find it so frustrating that it doesn't stay as well as something like the nature charcoal does um, so it's going to work with that you can use pan pastel and you can use pastels with charcoal graphite and pastels tend to not work as well together because of the molecular structure of them um, you've got to think about it like the charcoal uh, structure is like a gravelly ball and the structure of uh, graphite is like a little tiny plate and the balls don't stick to the plates they kind of slide over each other so that's why you don't tend to mix charcoal and pencils together 
Um, you can if it's a specific area that you want dark and just leave it for the charcoal to be the darkness and then refine it with a pencil, but generally they don't work too well together. Um, but you can, pastel works quite well, so you can use things like pan pastel and the little pads that I've got, um, like this. So it looks like a little uh, palette knife with a little tiny spongy pad on it. And they slip on. You can get these in different sizes and sh well, different shapes. Um, but you can also use um, like little makeup brushes. In fact, if you want to get a cheap version, these little kind of spongy makeup brushes are great for applying charcoal and pastels as well. Um, so yeah, these little pan, these little pans that you get for pan pastel um, to give it a wonderful consistency, very, very, very dark for the for the blacks, etc. But then you can rub them off and lift them off as well. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry that I'm not going to be able to do that demonstration for you. It's just really frustrating because uh, it's really thrown me now as to what I can do. Um, there's not a lot I can really do about that. Um, I'm going to fiddle on with it as we chat, uh, but you need to ask me a few questions. It will does really bring the art chat to art cat. Um, let's see if I can fiddle on with it. Uh, Window capture properties. Oh, that was okay. Um, I might flip back to this other screen. I'll be up there in the top right hand corner as I try and figure out what is going on with this drawing camera. That window capture is okay. Is that on? Is it working? It is working. Ha ha! I did it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the drawing comes up. Seems to have lost everything else there. Let's see. I was showing up a close-up image, but you can basically see. I've got my little head there as well. Oh, that's good to see. How big is it? Uh, is the target canvas? Why did you choose that picture to draw? Um, I like the subtlety of it, the subtlety of the light on his face and the delicate features that he had. Um, I like the contrast between the, the darkness of it, but it's not black black. Um, it's wonderfully kind of, uh, it's almost effortlessly dabs of pencil that say an awful lot. I mean, there's not much information in the eye there. You know, from the, from the eyebrow itself to the side and the structure of the nose, but it looks incredibly simple. But there's a lot of um, clever observation there. How the light transitioned across his head, so you get the front part of his facial part of his face um, moving around to the side cheek, moving around to where his ear is, to around where the back of the head is, and it gives you this wonderful kind of three-dimensional quality to it. Um, how big is the target canvas? Um, this is an A2 piece of paper. Um, what I'm looking to do is do a portrait of his face, maybe about this big. So you can see how I'm just kind of scaling up to twice the size. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> um, I've got it <laughs> for a horrible moment there. I thought I lost it. Um, so yeah, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move. Hopefully, I don't lose this, but I'm going to move this down a couple. To there, yep. Ah, that's better. Just so we can have a conversation still, and also you can see the image as I start to draw it. Um, so I'm going to move this camera up and over. I'm so happy that worked. I don't know why it suddenly started to work, but it works. So I'm not going to complain. So, yeah, thanks for asking us the questions because um, <laughs> pencil dropping on the floor as well. Really not having a good day today. Um, Oh, my arms aren't long enough. <laughs> Hang on. There we go. Pencils retrieved. So, 
if I'd done this in week one, I might never have tried to do it ever again. Um, but hey, again, you look, you have to go with the flow of these things because uh, life's like that. Um, where did I have my book? There it is. There's my book over there. I want to keep the book out because I might kind of refer back to it again. So I'll get this up and set up. Set up is kind of in, uh, one of those things that once you've got your kind of workspace laid out, if you've got all your pencils available to hand, if you've got your reference in front of you and your drawing space in front of you, everything becomes a little bit more comfortable, a little easier. Um, even though I've made it look incredibly complicated this morning. I'm just going to pop that there. Um, that's what I'm going to say. I'll pop that there. There we go. So, yeah, so I was talking about um, charcoal powder. Now, you can get a bit of sandpaper and a bit of charcoal, and you can rub it on there to create charcoal powder. You don't necessarily have to go and buy tubs of it. Um, you can refine it through a sieve. To make sure you get rid of any lumpy bits uh, so it's nice and uh, powdery um, I'm gonna put mine on initially with a big brush just to flick it on and then rub it on with a, a soft cloth that I have already prepared um, so yeah so I'm just using a, a bit of a like a mop brush just to literally splatter on onto the page have fun with this but it's a little bit more kind of expressive just to give myself a really nice ground it does stick to the paper as I was saying about sometimes when we are being so delicate and so light with uh, the mediums that we're putting on. You can do this with chocolate, graphite powder as well. You can work in graphite this way. This is a nice uh, liveliness to... Um, going to be one of those days connection up for around three to four seconds then goes off. Ah, oh, no. You're having a bad day too? <laughs> um, Alex, again, thank you very much for, for your, your kind gift. Uh, it was very well received, and I popped into Art in the Home this again this week. Um, so it was good to see them, and it was, uh, it, was it was nice, especially to kind of support these businesses because you know lockdown is incredibly tough for everybody, but when you're in a business and you don't you don't have that other sort of safety net of uh, being furloughed and somebody paying you a percentage of your wage even though that's difficult enough when you're in your own business and you've been employing other people it's really tough you know these guys are not large corporate businesses they're independent businesses. so if you are watching this so wherever you are in the world um, if you can support your local independent businesses it might not be about buying art materials it might be just buying you know um, your produce from a local supplier as well otherwise we lose them and I think that's the scariest thing with COVID I mean, when, we, when things kind of settle down and we come back to normal again you might find there's an awful lot of things that we're missing um, so let's not try and lose them um, if you can try and buy local um, I'm going to add a little bit more in certain areas I'm going to add a little bit more to this particular area they say this is wonderfully marked up I don't have to worry about it being precious or anything. Um, I can literally scrub in large areas of of this drawing. Um, I'm looking at this kind of big, big, big shape, you know, without going into fine, fine detail. Now this is kind of productive to uh, uh, almost to what we were talking about before, about refining lines, etc it's so big and blocky at the minute I'm not worried about those details but I can kind of see and fiddle out and sculpt the shape onto the page this actually isn't 
feels more natural to me. I haven't done it for a while. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to do it today. Uh, but this was more my kind of natural drawing style um, of drawing, uh, coming from a ceramics background. Um, this was much more kind of the structural element of my drawing that I was more interested in back in the day and I've kind of refined it over the, over the periods not to say that one is better than the other it's just different and so you can find different qualities to it now already I'm starting to get this kind of head shape starting to appear out of the mist the dust I'm trying to pull things out uh, did you dab to make the spots um, I basically flicked it off the brush and it kind of splatters everywhere and you rub it in with your cloth and then you can spread the charcoal around a little bit now what I'm saying is that this is very much more a reductive process so it's about layering up and taking some off and about putting some more on and taking some more off but it's the reductive process so when I'm looking at this rather than drawing a line where his head is, the back of his head is I'm actually going to use my rubber just to give me an element. So looking at the back of his head here, which is basically a vertical line, I'm going to say his back of his head is about here. And you can see another line that comes down this way. So I'm going to put that in. I'm just going to try and mirror those things. And then it's kind of a spudgy bit out there. And the rest of that is gone. Um, it kind of goes off that way. I just light it up here. Maybe it's lower down. Yeah, lower down there. And it goes off this way. And the good thing about this, if I get it wrong, say for example I chose that, that line, I can layer some graphite on it and it virtually disappears. So it's a bit, it's a, it's, a, it's a drawing in reverse where you're putting stuff off and you're taking it off. And if you get it wrong, you put on, put some some on rather than taking it off. Do you see what I mean? It doesn't matter the, what, that the charcoal is on and it's an even depth. By the time you've rubbed it in with a brush and the cloth, it will be quite even. It won't be kind of sitting on the top of the surface. Um, especially if you're doing it on a vertical surface, it's really good because it, gravity helps because it kind of takes any excess off you so you don't get any big lumpy bits. Um, and that's all I'm doing at the minute is just kind of playing around. Look, look at the size and width of his head. That might be out a little bit too far. So I'm, where we, we would draw roughly the shape and structure of the head, we're, we're actually drawing that by rubbing it out. If that makes sense. I know it sounds a bit weird. But we're actually doing the same thing. Where I'll be doing lines to find the structure of the head, I'm actually rubbing out the outsideness of the drawing to leave the solidity of the head. Um, looking at where things kind of meet up, and this is that point there, that should be the way the tip of the nose is a little bit down from there. So this is where that point is, the tip of the nose should be about there. And it's approximation. I can't be too specific about details right now because you know I, I'm working in such a refined manner at the moment it's very sort of chunky um, there's elements to his forehead maybe about there which is a little bit lighter remember what I was saying about the light falling down the lightest part where the light's coming in is hitting his forehead here and then it's gradually getting lighter. It's catching things like his cheekbone over here, which comes across to where his eyes are, and there's uh, his, his eyebrows, and there's a little bridge of his nose, and there's the tip of where his nose is, and there's a wonderful little bit which is lighter on the outside of where his lip is 
gets darker again so I can go back in and work some darkness into there so a tiny bit where his lip is which is about there maybe might move around a little bit and then the element there and here so I'm really moving around the whole portrait relatively quickly just looking to where, where shapes are rather than getting too stuck in with the finer details of you know that fine detail where his eyes his lines of his mouth is and things like that um, I'm looking seeing how that whole shape comes down there so that whole shape needs to come down there and then it comes back out there back down and over again now his chin might be slightly lower down than I've got it so I'll bring that down here a little bit um, I might need to put some actually some more charcoal back on this but quite quickly you can start to see some of the structure of the shape of the head start to appear start to emerge so you get that light bit hitting the part of his head here going around to where it's slightly darker on this bit and then where this darker shape starts to appear in I can sort of see that I would maybe bring that line down a little bit maybe that line down a little bit so it's kind of stepped where it goes step 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 now as we're drawing this from a reference now I'm trying to copy almost another person's mark making technique um, you're just back <laughs> okay so if you missed the bit um, there that I was talking about making the this spots I literally just flicked the uh, charcoal dust on and then rubbed it all in with the soft cloth and the brush um, I can go back in this now and lightly rub off all of those little marks relatively quickly we're starting to get some of the structures in or of where things need to be uh, I can see that this element here about his cheek needs to come across a little bit so I've taken it too far in so I can dab some more in bring that cheek back a little bit so I'm literally just as you can see just dabbing it in to the pot of charcoal when I first put it on it would be quite dark as you rub it with a brush it gets uh, softer um, so it's got a wonderfully painterly quality to this so if you're thinking about trying painting out you know, and you're uncomfortable to move from uh, monochrome graphite pencil charcoal you know, drawing medium scent into using color and you're worried about brushes and things you can try this process because it gets you to feel quite comfortable about putting all of these marks down and in um, so hopefully that helps you a little bit again it gives you a different style of quality to your drawing I'm not going to be able to get every mark perfectly the same as this but I don't necessarily want to do that I want to kind of bring my interpretation to it um, I'm starting to notice that this goes out a little bit so I might tweak that back of his head a little bit which might have a knock-on effect to all these marks so the knock goes back out pull those back in again uh, my mark is going too far in that way it needs to come out you see the angle of it so I'll put this back down it's a great flexibility in this process Oh, it's an A2 page, Alex. Yeah, there's an A2 page which is in a portrait format that goes to go straight up in there. So, um, so I'm not worried about kind of getting sucked down into the minutiae of things. I can refine these things with the rubber, um, which I'm going to do again. So where I moved the back of his 
head out a little bit. So I think this angle comes down there a little bit more. And then the angle of this comes down here a little bit more. You can see the angle is a little bit better now. Um, and where it is here over here, it's actually going to move it back a little bit. So, and I can refine the rubber. I can get sort of a square of rubber. Um, Desri, you work very kindly, got me some um, eagle wing rubbers, which one of ones just trying to escape me as I try and pick it up. Barely was. I don't know what is wrong with me today. Because I've got so much stuff technically wise on my desk. When you put a pencil down, it falls off all the side. That's been me trying to pick it up like this for the last five minutes. Um, they've got these ingle wing pe pencils, they've got these wonderful square rubbery bits on them. You can get uh, the Mono Zero rubbers with a flatter edge, and you can use that as well. Um, but I thought it would be a lovely way of kind of drawing these things in. I'm actually going to. me a, a little bit better edge or across this side so where this comes down over his head here there's a wonderful curve a soft curve which comes down there and back out and then back down and then back out this way to where the tip of his nose was and his nose is about there there's a a line which comes that way. This is the line here. Two basically where the the bottom lip comes out this way. And then comes back in this way. It's quite a chunky way of drawing. It's quite abstract in its format there. Um comes straight down, colour marks. There's a wonderful kind of element to say where the chin stops, which is about there and take the tip of the tip of that off uh, I see if I like that you pull this across the surface I can start to see similarities to the the marks that this portrait has And where this corner of the nose is. So just using the edge on it, you get a thinner edge on it. It's A2. So it's um, A2. <laughs> I don't know if your sound's still on or not. Um, so yeah, I, you can kind of see it's very basic. I'm not. Um, but I'm getting a similarity to um, the basic forms of it. I, I'm not trying to be too specific in, in light detail lines. I'm going to cross over to a charcoal pencil now. Um, I can put in some darker concentrated areas. So I'm looking at where this back of the head is and where the ear is here. That's where this is a hard, it is a hard <laughs> natrium charcoal. Um, I've got some soft somewhere. So I'm going to use a softer charcoal. There we are. Oh, my camera's just gone off. Perfect time. I have lost where my camera has gone. Well, I'm not going to worry about it too much. We can go back to the other camera if we need to see me again. Um, let's say, well, stay in my eyes this morning. <laughs> um, it's probably just as well you're not looking at it too closely. I'm going to put this little line in here for this line of where the nose is. 
because uh, it's just going to help me figure out where the corner of his nose comes to because this creates a lovely chunky mark so I'm going to pop some of that in and it comes back down this way so again it's light it's not as dark as it needs to go right now but it allows me to kind of put some of these marks in you can snap um, smaller chunks off if you need to so it's easier to manipulate and hold if you find the large batten of it is difficult you can get batten holders which are really cool um, which I did have somewhere it's gone walkies everything's disappeared this morning on me I think my cat's been moving them around yeah there's you can get these batten holders by Natrum um, they're a bit quite expensive um, you know I was using some of the pencil holders that we use with the pencils uh, these pencil extenders which has also gone for a walk as well I've lost literally everything this morning on my desk um, cameras are not working uh, as I say if this was like what it was like in week one I don't think anybody will be watching it right now so thanks for sticking with us um, the button holders you can get from Natrum as well um, you can pop your uh, you need some charcoal in there and draw with it like a wand um, gives you a great uh, way of kind of stepping back and seeing your the, your work you know because you're almost drawing it from a distance that way um, but this is kind of the papers moving around as well um, this is sort of very, very up close and personal kind of feel to to draw in. I'll pop that darkness coming back in here. I, I know that this light needs to move across, so I'm going to give myself a little bit of an indicator as to where that is. It's about, about there. That's where I'm going to put a highlight in for the ear and I'm going to let that bend around. Um, give a little bit of texture to that back of the head, which is similar to the one on my picture here. So you can start to see some of these elements of textures uh, are similar as well. What is interesting is I think that's not too far away from the top of the ear. And the bottom of the ear is about there. So I'm not drawing the ear shape i'm drawing the shapes around it the, the shadows around it and it, the ear starts to emerge from it so if that is where the ear is coming across from there that's where the cheek is and it comes down at that sort of angle all the way down to this point and i might need to move this across a little bit so it's saying it's a very flexible process of drawing because you're not getting caught up in trying to be too perfect too soon you can actually you know, allow the flexibility of it to all happen you can have some fun with it um, you know, we get very precious over the image that we create when we're drawing and sometimes that can be our downfall it can be the thing that stops us from drawing because And use that there we are. I'm probably saving as you rub out a bit harder it becomes a little bit lighter yeah it's there To get a sense of where this darkness is and this inner part of the ear kind of lose it as it all fades away down here and we can put all that structure back in which is darker here which 
this is a lovely highlight to this part of the ear here this ear here sounds like the snail and eye again um, yeah I think this comes out a little bit further up there not perfect but we can start to see an ear up here do you see how this works it's very put on take off put on take off you're working very much in a closer response I can now see where I have this highlight up here it should be actually in line with this part of his ear so it needs to drop down a little bit so I can use my rub go to a big one and I'll take that away a little bit because I think it is more there See all these little undulations, undulations and marks and scribbly bits add a little bit of extra flavour and flair to the to the portrait. So I'm starting to see where this cheek is now, coming out and around and down, and it's more here. And again, I'm bouncing between the two images just to see where things are. I'm, I want to get a, a relative likeness to the image, but I'm not worried about. You know, photo accurate um, realism, hyper realism to getting a, a perfect nature to the drawing. It's much more expressive. I think that light mark is there, which means this is highlighted, and this also then comes across to that point there so I take that out and then take that mark out as well so I'm looking at these two marks you know how far that comes up which is still lower down it's much lower down in fact so it's about there because it's not in line with the bottom of his ear it's further down And I'll take it a little bit down to about that point. Which then pushes down certain other structures. So uh, it comes across this way. And then it comes across that way. It's lowered where this cheek is a little bit. And that's where the underside of the bottom part of his chin is. So I'll use my brush to blend all that back in. It needs to be about there, and this is slightly more angled. So again, it's very chunky, but you start to get a softness that starts to build in as well. You know, so we'll have a look around where that arc of the shadow comes right into the top of this ear. And from a, there's a small line which is about there. I'm going to put that in lightly, and it pushes. There we go, a little bit. So you can see how we're kind of building up that three dimensionality to that to the ear a little bit. Um, yeah, that's better. 
So he's using the edge of the charcoal edge to kind of sculpt the line, push push the charcoal around into the right place. And if it's wrong, just rub over it with a brush or pull it off the rubber. And I'm not worried about the um, <coughs> getting the mark in the perfect right place straight away. I'm taking away that kind of worry and fear a little bit. Um, A wonderful kind of you see that it's like a W shape it goes down there up there down there and up back up there again and then where that W sort of finishes at a point here it gives me a wonderful space to where the angle of his cheek comes out to about there and then it comes down Until it comes out to, to about this point here, which is just almost in line with the, the corner of his mouth, which is about there. It can almost come out as a line there. Let's see where the under part of his nose is here, which then goes into his nostril gives you that kind of shape and this, the top part of that nostril actually follows on through to the bottom part of his um, the bulbous part of his uh, nasal cavity you see it just there so the nostril hole basically goes down to where that part of his nostril on the outside goes up so I can then re that back in because it's got a bit fluffy and messy so I'm going to sculpt that line and then put this one down this way and then if I put it up that way I get to where the rest of that nose comes out so I can some of that charcoal just pull it across now that's way too dark and it's um, so I'm gonna rub back a little bit but I just want to kind of sculpt where the shape of this nose comes out so not that way goes up that way then goes up that way so I know then now this comes up over and across to about there there is nothing here this is all space behind the head so I can take that out and then where I can see his nose comes in and this comes down and it comes back out and it comes back out at that point, this bottom lip, back down. So I'm constantly moving around the portrait still. Remember, I was over here, I was doing the head, doing the top of the head here, going back down here, working on his jaw, with his jaw related to his ear, read his ear again, move back over to where his cheekbone was, move his cheek over, move his nose again. Whenever you change anything, you should feel comfortable about moving around the portrait and just adjusting, tweaking manipulating a little bit where the other features are going to be sitting before we get sucked into doing the detail of them so I think that um, is a little bit harsh looking for the bottom of his nose so I'm going to lighten that by just rubbing it almost out again with I'm just going over it with a brush leaving in that dark area I've lost this little dark area so I've put that back in again I've got a better idea of where it's going now. Let's come down there, over a little bit, and then back down. Down that way, and so this is almost like a little shape of the African continent underneath his nose. So, yeah. You can see that sort of shape. Um, I 
and then I can go back in and refine that again. So even though I've done this one, I kind of the more you do it, the the more kind of assured you are where your marks are going. And it's each layer is adding wonderful quality to the paper, which is quite nice. What's lovely is it's making me go have a look at this bit which comes up. It's about that point that it really kind of goes back over this direction. I wasn't going to be too specific with it just yet. Um, environment on the, the lovely highlighty bit which comes across kind of there over the nose and then back. This is a lot lighter, so I'm going to lighten that off by going just dragging the rubber, not so I'm scrubbing it back out to the base of the paper again, but just lightly dragging the rubber over the surface just to give me this kind of where this bridge of the nose comes up. I can't use my picture reference as well. Where this part of his eye and his bridge of his nose meet. If I went straight across to get to the tip of his ear, if this is the tip of his ear and it comes straight across, that's where that mark should go up at that point. Which is going to force a couple of things maybe out that direction a little bit, up and around. Um, but then a lovely angle comes down this way. It gives me the wonderful kind of turn to the to his nose. I say I think it needs to be more to this side of his eye. I'll pop a little more graphite down on there. We're sculpting it back out. I like where his nose is there, so I'm going to keep that in kind of one place, get a uniformity to the paper on the other side of it. Where it comes up, and definitely over the side, you can start to see more of it over the cheek. I've maybe rubbed my cheek too far out, so I don't know if you can see that on on there. There's not enough cheek on this side. I've kind of made mine very very thin. It should be a little bit more cheek. So I'm going to actually put a little bit more cheek. Which brings his forehead out, out a little bit. It's a much thinner line on the drawing than I've got there. Uh, it's much more delicate. Um, but at this point, I'm using a big chunky bit of uh, charcoal, and I can refine it back down and use a charcoal pencil. I'm kind of looking at a couple of marks above his. Uh, Eye there for his eyebrow. I put those in. Might not be in the perfect place right now, but just to think it's again sculpturally about where these shapes actually come down. Flip over to uh, this is just a very very soft um, 
General's charcoal pencil. Um, I can look around some of these elements and start to put some of these marks in that I can see. Moving back down. So his first eye is going in. I'm not going to be too detailed with it because it might need to move a little bit. I can see where my nose has migrated a little bit. So that's where the bottom of the nose is as a shadow there and the shadow comes across this point and look for this nostril hole and let's get that shape of continent of Africa right back in it's about there A dab just beside that. Okay, that kind of comes out. It doesn't quite join up. There's no there's no actual pencil line going around it, you know, to create this nose. But you can see the illusion of the nose starting to appear now three-dimensionally of that ear that we had earlier it really picks out with that little bit of highlight over the top of the top of the ear and then this inner little bit of the ear and this could be a lot lighter here as well so I can draw that maybe back in a little bit stronger or rub it out a little bit stronger so I can take it back to the whiteness of the page like most things if you've been uh, putting lots of charcoal on and off and on and off eventually the paper will start to tone down you can use a bit of white chalk if you really need to put a key highlight in and you find that your paper's gone a little bit flat and dull um, you can use a bit of white chalk or white pastel to pick that back up again um, but that would generally be towards the end right now I'm kind of using my to soften this off a little bit using the charcoal in there my finger just dabbing it use of, um, I don't generally use my fingers an awful lot in drawing, but in this, it's much more expressive and fun to do to kind of just make the marks. You know, you can still have control over those marks. Looking at the back of his head, you know, it comes down a little bit. That's still not too bad of marks there. I think this one comes over this way a little bit more. And then comes down this way. And comes straight down that way a little bit. Give some of these in interesting structures to the to the eye on the opposite side that we can't quite see. Um, where this line comes up, it actually meters where the top of this eye starts to come down on this side. Uh, it will start to bring in the structure a little bit. Um, where this eye stops there, so it's about there. It's a little tiny return. And where the turn it comes down, it's gone up this way, it then comes down that way. Goes up that way, comes down this way. Um, we're going straight across from there. I actually get the top of where this other eye is, and a little tiny mark there, a little tiny mark there, a little tiny mark there, and then the darkness of that, the darkness of that eye.
hope this is all making sense for you. See, it's not normally what we've been drawing style-wise like, but you can see the process of adjustment is very, very similar. So we're getting a different quality of drawing out from the way I would have normally drawn a portrait before. And as I say, it kind of made me reflect back from the Sky Portrait Artist of the Year to kind of go, ah, do you need to draw like that? Do you need to be so specific about things? Can I let sometimes the, the mediums and the materials do some of the storytelling of what that face is about? Um, I think this is coming down a little bit lower. And that's where the top of his head is. This is where the front of that head is. Um, maybe that's where that is. And that's where Mr. Lee's eye is. Kind of feels better there. I think this needs to come back the mark there so it's not quite so harsh and rub that back a bit and um, there's a lovely shadow which comes down very subtle and comes back in to the nose and this shadow comes down a little bit further still and this shadow is a little bit harsher just about about there so again these different drawing methods and materials using a charcoal block like that a charcoal powder charcoal pencil uh, a squarish flattish rubber a pointy rubber and an old flat rubber all uh, are drawing tools we're not putting necessarily things on but they're, they're sculpting and man manipulating the charcoal on the surface to give us the kind of structure that we want to try and create in this in this uh, drawing of Mr. Lee uh, there's a lovely highlight which kind of picks across and there's highlights here down onto his eye his eyebrow ridge, a uh, little bit there, a little bit there, um, kind of using the rubber to sculpt some of the, the drawing marks that we almost need in there. Kind of using, using the rubber to kind of search out and find out where things are. And then if they're not right, just kind of putting, putting some more charcoal back in. But we can see the structure of everything starting to build up. Quick slab of coffee. Hope, hope this is keeping uh, you kind of open, open to the idea that you can still be loose and free with your drawing, but get something that's very representational, to get some little bit of life and energy to it. So your mark making comes out through and your quality as an artist comes out through your image as well as doing a likeness. Oh, cam's gone off. Just go back on. Okay, that's drawing cam back up. So there's still quite a few clicks involved in getting this camera back up. I'm going to capture properties. I should be able to do some eye shot by now, but there you go. Done. Are you going to try and catch up for uh, possibly next week? Nope, no not a problem, Alex. Again, thank you so much. It's very kind of you for your help this week. Um, and yeah, 
have a look back online and see if you can watch it back because I'm not playing any music in my headphones so we won't lose the uh, it won't get banned <laughs> I learnt my mistake there we go using this kind of very sculptural way of drawing. There's a wonderful, wonderful little mark here, though, if you can see if I zoom in. It looks like the inside of a Mercedes logo. You see it? That little mark there? It's there. You see it? This little mark here? He's that little mark there. Now mine might be too big, too small. Zoom back out. But sometimes just seeing the obscure little shapes of things and putting those together can really help find out where the bottom of a lip is. It's also the angle of his the angle of his chin. Um because I have my chin out here and I know now it has to move back a little bit. And then that helps me to find find where this mark is and then maybe yeah where that mark is which means that these marks have to be whoops again if we don't keep moving my paper um, a little bit darker around here so I'm not drawing sort of specific a draw jaw line but I'm using the shadows to to give me the, some of those things where this comes up here and then over this way his mouth comes out a little bit further I think at that point in fact this mark comes back here I'm going to rub this back out a bit up here and where his bottom jaw comes in is down here gives me more space for this part coming across here to his bottom jaw there some wonderful marks for his for his lips and things so I can soften some of these things and rub some areas out again. I lost that highlight a little bit. I lost that highlight out from the bottom of his the bottom lip, his highlight in the bottom lip. Um, I lost that a little bit, so I'm going to pop that back in. Um, I think where we've lost the contour, I'm going to pop that back in again. This nose has got a wee bit long, I'll take that back. This is wider, the space, and then just kind of I'm just tickling the surface just to lighten it a little bit, I'm not rubbing it back to the edge of the paper just to lighten these areas a little bit. Just so I've got a softer contour going around. There's a, a bit of a, a line up and around which widens the eye a little bit. It's a bit too narrow looking before. Um, this is a little bit too harsh. I'll dab it. 
Not the black, so it's not quite so harshly dark. It's a bit more greyish. And bring that down. So that helps us find where this edge is. This isn't so much of a line as an entire shadow, so I could go back in with that with a chocolate pencil. Again, that's maybe a wee bit dark. Oh, I don't know, I might leave that. Oh. I think, from, yeah, that's better. Comes down. So there's a mark on the other side there, which we can get rid of. This mark here was a bit too wide. And that helps us find the edge of this nose. So you can see relatively quickly, because I didn't start until much later today, that we have quite a lot of portrait in very quickly. Um, I think the shadow underneath his chin needs to be tackled because it's too light. So where we've got darknesses coming in here, they need to be the same quality coming down. I'm just not too sure. Just looking at his top part of his mouth there, a little beautiful line coming across into kind of a, a blocky area which comes out. It's much structure, more structural now, putting those elements back in. So using darknesses to, when we know where they are, to put them in properly. Uh, you need to go shortly. Will, will it be a classic this week? Um, online, yes, at 2 o'clock. In the real world, I don't know. don't think so. Um, so the real, real world ones are not happening at the moment. 2 o'clock. On a, on a Saturday, yes, they will. Yeah, it will be here. So thanks for being with us, both of you, Alex and Desri. Um, I'm going to keep on playing around with this a little bit. So if you want to come back later and catch up to see where it gets up to, you're more than happy, welcome to do that. Um, but if not, I'll see you guys um, online tomorrow if you're going to watch the Sky Portrait Artist of the Year on Sky TV, Facebook page. And yeah, tomorrow's going to be fun. Um, I might carry on doing it this particular style. Kind of, I enjoyed this kind of process today, so uh, I might carry on with this tomorrow. Do it something a bit faster and looser, especially after doing sort of a, a more not laborious because it wasn't laborious. It was still fun, but uh, a more considered um, painting process. This kind of I think this if I if I can get this into my painting, it'll improve it tenfold I think um, I'm just a little bit m more hesitant and clumbersome I think when it comes around painting um, but it's certainly it's got a freedom to it which I really like um, I mean, I'll get that mark definitely is there 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 that's where that so yeah, um, so yeah, should be fun. Uh, hope to guys see you guys then. But I'm going to carry on drawing until I get this done a little bit more because I did start quite late. I don't know what the time is now. Uh, thanks for all your perseverance today. <laughs> Ended up a goodbye informative class. Good, good and informative. <laughs> good. I'm pleased. That's what I wanted to do. Um, you can sort of see, as I said, you can see the structures of, of things and. You know, are just as important being loose and fast and free. You can still be, have control with them, but you can still get a very expressive kind of mark making process that develops into your portrait. I don't think we're too far away from, you know, as an exercise, calling this, um, calling this one. But I'll kind of fiddle on with it. Um, if you want to check back later, you'll be able to watch the end of the the whole kind of the video. 
but I'm glad you yeah, stuck with it, got through it today. Thank you for being with us. Okay. I was almost ready to go, ah, that's it, let's not bother today, because it's a bad morning with my eyes. Look like I've gone five rounds with Frank Bruno. There we go, Sonic get a little bit just there with his ear as well. Can you see the structure starting to come out as I'm putting charcoal down darker now and more in definitive areas? But there's a wonderful light, you know, how that transitions from this darkish area. And softens down and that darken area picks up where this corner of the mouth is and it picks up where the underside of his nose is and a little bit when his eyes are and soft areas, mid-tone areas make relationships. So all these dark areas have a relationship to, sort of, to, to each other. Um, Frau lines on his forehead. We've got loads of them in our family. It's like a Boyd family tradition with Frau line. Just let me know that that highlight needs to move up a little bit, which is great. I'm going to go back in with this mono eraser. Just so you've got more control over an edge. Um, so I'm going to pop that back in as well. Because I think that's up here. Lovely highlight just on his cheek. Then I'll pop in. Which helps me figure out that where I initially had this shadow here, it's actually going further back this way. Which gives space to this eye. Go back to that uh, end of the black wing rubber. Today, this is a wonderful book. There's some wonderful examples of really good portraiture in there, and it really takes you through kind of a structural process of of laying shapes and spaces down first before getting sucked into detail. And I just thought this very reductive process is slightly alternative to what was in the book to create this portrait, but it's also very similar. I know it sounds a contradiction. Um, I want to soften this a little bit. But you can start to see that rather than drawing the lines around, I could draw a whole shape of the space and sculpt it out with a rubber. I'm left with almost the inside done. I'm left with the... the people always kind of want to skip to the rendering. This is almost like putting their layers down and revealing it and then putting structural lines down on top of it. Now we were kind of putting structural lines down first and say so that's a very, very um, soft charcoal pencil. I'm just going to maybe go to something that's a little bit harder um, just because I don't want so much charcoal to come off on as a medium. Even that might be too soft. 
is hard. Oops. So, like pencils, we have different grades. Uh, a pencil 9B being the softest and blackest and darkest, and then 9H being the crispest and sharpest and lightest. Um, we've got hard, medium, and soft, or extra hard you can get, but in general, pencils are quite good. Um, uh, spin that around there. So, general pencils, I'm using a hard one to put this in, and the other one with a medium. So, this is too light. Actually, it's not going to be too light. That's got, that hard is, is perfect enough. Um, there are some marks in there which I really like as a structural mark. It just gives an edge to where things are. This is that Mercedes symbol inside the circle that we're looking at. really light and delicate with this much more light and delicate than I'm being with it as you can get with the uh, the natrum as well you can get some lovely differences in the tonality of them and you can sharp them up using the, uh, a bit of emery paper to give a very fine point or you can get one of the natrum paddles it's a bit like this it looks like a tennis table bat with an abrasive surface on it and I also use this for uh, graphite as well uh, but you need to make sure that the pads are cleaned um, it does come with uh, replacement pads as well, so these are really handy. But you, you know, these can be a little bit more expensive than a cheap um, alternative, like a bit of sandpaper. Um, just find a, a grade, you know, get some different grades in there. Using this kind of, it's not necessarily cross hatching, it's a linear effect just to break the edge and the sharpness of that cheek a little bit. So I'm just doing very similar lines but very lightly over that surface just to darken the tone down a little bit. And I'm going to do the same, you know, up here as well of his forehead. Maybe a little bit, his go down that way. So often we kind of get absorbed into the face and we forget to look at the structures of the actual head itself and it's just as important so we give weight and space to the head so we don't have a great face but a very thin head. Slightly cross hatching that whole area just to darken it down just a little bit. You know, putting a little bit of darkness there just behind that ear lifts out because of the whiteness. You know, putting a little bit dark down, white next to it will make it seem a lot full further forward. Desri, see you next week. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so, yeah. Again, pulling some of these shapes in, or as much a part of this portrait as the, some of the features in the face. The case shape here, which gives us both the angle of his nose and the angle of the bridge of the nose, and also where his eye is, and it just helps differentiate between the other 
I hear. So yeah, um, I see Mr. Lee that I've drawn is very much different from the Mr. Lee that was drawn from the book. But there's a wonderful sculptural element to it which I really like and enjoy doing. And I think I could play around with this, you know, and just do hundreds of these drawings. Because they don't, they don't take an relatively an awful long amount of time, but you get to figure out what what works for you and it's always about training your eyes, always about helping you able to see what it is you're looking at and how you're going to best render it or create it and if you build up those techniques the techniques work for you rather than you being a slave to a technique that you get to express something of yourself artistically which is what we also want to add to the technical it's great to know how to all these different tips and techniques but you want to be able to control them as to say something for yourself you know what do you want to say about this portrait i love the the drawing process of this exercise um how marks can flow and blend into one another you know taking a mark like that and scribbling it across all the shadows really helps soften it this light is too light i'm going to scribble over that with a hard charcoal pencil just to take it down a tone or two without redrawing it, re-rubbing it all back out, just softening it down a little bit helps us figure out the space and shape. There's a lovely line which comes up from the top of this cheek here, here. So I think above here needs to be a little bit darker. So I've got more control, but it's still following the image that I want to create. Same here. This needs to be just a little touch darker. Needs to be a little bit lighter. You're putting things on, putting things off. So it's all good. And there's another triangle bit just here. Just to get a real kind of sense of curve coming around. You see that? Then those starts to feel like there's a nostril sitting on top of his face now. Um, and just little things. I'm sort of tweaking little areas now. Lovely little bit that comes down. You now this outside of the mouth here, it's not such a a sharp contrast straight into the lip. There's a little bit of fleshy meat underneath that lip of the muscle, and you can sort of see where it kind of comes down flatter. It's not following the crisp line of the of the lip. A little mark there, and a little mark. about there just to distinguish that kind of uh, front chin muscle as well it gives a bit of definition to this area so these marks are expressive marks finding out where things are like draw marks almost but they all add to the overall structure of, of the head A little bit of darkness, which is a almost like a little dimple. This point, Mr. Lee's face. Where is W sign? Don't lose that. Put that back in. There's a lovely sort of quality sort of to suggested hairline. Um,
And this little shot that pops around there is a little bit lighter here. Uh, there's some structural marks come down to here. A little tiny shadow that follows all the way through. It's a bit lighter than I've got it there, but I'll put that back out again. Just to give you that kind of definition between one eyebrow and the other eyebrow. You see where that is? This little tiny shadow, and then it crosses over to this side of the head, which is a little bit softer than I have it. Same for this nostril comes out a little bit. Maybe soften this one and light that up a little bit. So, um, as a quick drawing exercise, I think I have lots of. It's not a thing. This isn't the perfect representation of of the drawing that was done from the book. But there's lots of qualities that we can look at and to see how we can get to them without following the same process of being too sharp and too delicate with the tip of a pencil that sometimes expressive marks are, are fantastic for really getting down what's interesting about a portrait um, we're still getting an image that has a realism to it a representationalism to it should I say uh, and sometimes those things are interesting to follow you know, you can play around with just with minutia of detail, which can just be the extra flurry on the surface. There's like a little bit of a light line which curves around a little bit, which softens that eye, gives it a little bit of a human quality. There's a little bit of a light line just there on that side. There's a little bit of a, almost like the line of the bottom, the ledge of the bottom lid, eyelid, uh, which just softens a little bit. You know, if I took a brush and just soften that whole area, and drag that through. This is a large brush. You know, and then took that large rubber and really cleaned off this whole surface. You can get a real contrast that really stands out. I don't want to rub too much of the marks away. There's an interesting quality image starting to appear. I can sort of see a shadow. Um, appear here on top of the top of his head and a little dab of charcoal from the brush and paint it in the camera's switched off probably just in time for me to say uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> there we go. Get it back to that shit. Yeah, go back up anyway. There we go. 
So I hope you found that informative uh, and of interest to you. Um, I hope it helps with kind of maybe how you think about your artwork or what you want to do or say with your artwork. Um, when people say when they come to the class, people often look into they're drawing a specific style, uh, drawing a very impressionistic style, things like that. And this is closer to the impressionistic style. It's in a more formulated, formal, kind of analytical, structural way. But the ba the basics of that analytical, structural way, where it's not going to the finesse of hyper-realistic detail, is also very impressionistic. So the two avenues of looking at artwork have a lot of similarities to them. How you can abstract shapes. Remember, I was looking and saying, well, this shape is like the Mercedes symbol. This shape is like the continent of Africa. We're looking at shapes of structures on a face, associate them to be something else. So we can see and identify that shape so we can draw it in. So it will actually represent the bottom of a lip or the nostril of a nose. Now, if I said to you, today we're going to draw the nostril of a nose that looks like the shape of Africa, you go, what are you talking about? But as you can see, we've developed through the drawing, it does look like that. But it's not to say that every nose that you look at has that shape in it. You have to identify those shapes individually every time you look at a portrait, a landscape, an apple on a chair, or whatever it is you want to create. You kind of identify the shapes that are of interest for you and put those in as, as structural markers and build up and move around your drawing until you become happy with it. That's with you being in control of your artwork rather than searching around and panicking to try to get the likeness. If you are true to the structural marks of the of your drawing, it will appear. So this has been quite fun today because I say it's not well, sort of the drawing style that we've been looking at over the last few weeks, but yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. I did. Um sorry about the delay and the uh, haphazard nature of me dropping things and not being able to see things too clearly <laughs> this morning. Um, but it's, I think it's actually added to the drawing process. Um, quite enjoyed it. So, uh, again, thanks very much for being with us. Thanks for watching. I will be back again, hopefully with better eyesight and a better self, uh, next week at 2 o'clock, uh, UK time, GMT or BST, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so be here same time, YouTube. Uh, or you can watch us on, on Facebook as well. All right, guys, thank you so much. I'll see you again soon. All right, bye. Oh, before I go, I will put up links to the bits and pieces that we talked about. They'll put a link up to the book. So thank you very much to Mao Kun Yim and Iris Yim, who wrote a fabulous book. Um, I'll put links up to that so you can get it. And charcoal pencils. There's a, an affiliate system I use through Amazon, but I'm not saying you have to buy it through them. I'm just giving you the information. You can click on it and get it through there, and I get a small payment back that way. Um, but if you want to buy it through your local bookstores and things like that, crack them.